Cinema Classics is produced by John DeSando and Johnny DiLoretto. Listen to shows every Thursday at 8.01 p.m. and full shows online at WCBE.org. I'm Johnny DiLoretto. I'm John DeSando. This is Cinema Classics. It sure is. It is not. It's movie time. But we'll keep this. <laughs> because I want a video I record. He's waiting. Yeah. He's, he's been waiting. I want a record of your glaring... Mistake. Mark, can you bring me my, my oh. oh stop, we don't need that. Color. Of course we do. That this I, no, 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 now I gotta repin the No no you don't the we'll black just put and this white picture right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't think our 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 broadcast radio audience will care. Yeah, our broadcast radio <laughs> audience won't care. Nor will the two people that will stumble upon us on YouTube. Okay, so we're not talking about Robert Redford and Paul Newman today. Ah. We are talking about Leo DiCaprio and Brad and Pitt. Brad Pitt. And and typical cinema classes. We have no idea what we're talking about because we haven't seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. No, but I'm excited to see it. <laughs> so we need to talk about these yeah. two guys. Probably think... the preeminent Hollywood actors, do you think, at this time? Not acting just as stars. Let's say this. Two males that you would pick who, who do not have, as far as I'm concerned, the mojo of the first two that I mentioned. Oh, my God, no. No. But they are prominent. They're well-known. I needed to say only Leo or Brad. Yeah. Well, you and everybody in this room, including Mark, would know exactly of whom I'm speaking. We should call them Brio. <laughs> we're talking about Brio. All right. So, well, I, I guess we're, we're trying to mash up, as we sometimes do. These well, first two. of all, let's, take, let's jump off there. Paul Newman and Robert Redford. Um, those guys only made two movies together. Okay. Um, but they were lifelong friends. They had an undeniable chemistry. And when uh, you watch those two movies, right. you just... It's its uh, alchemy. You can't even quantify what's happening. I agree. Um, so I'm really curious to see what happens with these two guys. And, and uh, Such big stars. But right now, we can talk about them individually and yeah. juxtapose them. Okay. All right, and say, okay, so we have Leo DiCaprio, perhaps as the more eminent of the two. Definitely in terms of thespian abilities. Okay, that's why I'm, I'm interested that? in that, yes. From the very start, first of all, he burst onto the scene in the, this boy's life. You remember that? Oh, with my De Niro? gosh. Well, for so he's been acting yeah. since he was a kid. For me, his, his burst came in Thelma and Louise. Oh, you're talking about Brad Pitt. I'm, I'm talking about Leon. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Now the whole bad. show is now the whole Let's thing. start over again. This no. is Cinema Classics. I'm just kidding. And we, okay, so Leo, you're you're talking about Leo very early before Titanic, which must have been in 97 <clears throat> or something like that. Excuse me, yeah. I'm talking about Leonardo in This Boy's Life. And then very quickly he popped up in uh, What's Eating Gilbert Grape. And he, he was... Um, you know, had a developmental disability. Yeah. And that was an astonishing performance. Yeah, that was and 93. He was, he was in, uh, was it, is it Boz Lerman's Romeo and Juliet? Yep, 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 yep. That was in 96. Uh, so he sh demonstrated right out of the gate a kind of crazy range, intensely emotional. Brad Pitt, who did burst onto the scene, as you yes. said, in Thelma and Louise, in, in, yeah. I always felt early on that he was very limited and that he was even to a degree I felt looked uncomfortable on camera sometimes like in movies like uh, A River Runs Through It and well, cast as you know sort of the the younger Redford yeah and and part of his the, the, the challenge there is that he is so beautiful as a human being where Leo of course is but in a different way but he's He's got the Redford look, yeah. that charisma that comes from looks. And I think you're on to what may have been his limitation for a long time. Yeah, it, and it, I think it, he was aware of that. Yes, and self-conscious about yeah, it. Yeah, and then he tried to break free of it. You know, he did, what? Uh, I think it was seven years in Tibet, something like that. He, he started pushing very early to do, you know, bigger, grander, Oscar caliber type yeah. things. And he just wasn't ready for it. I personally didn't kind of 
start enjoying him fully until um, seven. No, not even that. I Fight mean, Club. Mm, I, actually, Moneyball. Well, yeah, but I think before. I mean, I know, yeah. I, well, I'm saying he made good movies before, yeah. but he didn't fully come into his own until Moneyball. Like, Mon where he yeah. looks completely comfortable. He's giving us a, a, a nuanced, rich character performance. You know, a lived-in performance. That's what I think he was lacking. That quality of living, just being able to be a character. Yeah, so you didn't see it in Troy. I actually love Troy. <laughs> There you go, see? See, that's funny you say that. Actually, that was... I want to rectify myself. I really loved him in Troy. Because that part is clearly, from the very start, I love that when they introduce you to his character, Achilles, he is a god. He's like half god. Right. So now suddenly his looks make sense, right? And, uh, and that's true. This he... kid, this kid runs into his tent and says, Achilles, Achilles, Agamemnon wants you. And he hates Agamemnon. And he's got all these concubines around him. And he gets up and he gets on his horse and he's going into battle and the kid says, aren't you afraid? And he goes, no. And he goes, wow, I would be afraid. And he goes, well, that's why you'll never be a <laughs> god. god. That's <laughs> exactly. why you'll never be awesome. And I love that. It's so <laughs> callous and... It, it, it's that that's really where I started to turn around on him. And I and I had prejudices going into that because of his beauty and his limited acting ability until we hit Troy and realized that he could carry a movie. And then the next sign for me is the Benjamin Button. Yeah. You know, I think yeah, where yeah. he really begins to do some good work. Mm -hmm. Now Leo, after Titanic, what do we got here except the Revenant? What else is going on with him? You know Well, you know, Leo became the new De Niro in terms of his relationship with Scorsese. Well, yes. So Scorsese That's built... As as it goes. Scorsese built... Uh, Scorsese and De Niro built uh, one of the great artistic cinematic collaborations of all time beginning in the 70s through the 90s. Yeah. Um, and then, looking for a younger muse, he turned... Scorsese turned to Leonardo DiCaprio... Those partnerships have not wrought the same level of quality. Films. No, no, no. Well, um, they're always kind of troubled. Gangs of New York seemed like it was going to be. It's it has some amazing stuff in it, but right. it's it never flawed. really made it. Now, Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street is their best collaboration. Yes. I think. Yeah, I think. Uh, the yeah. Aviator sucks. Uh, whatever else they did before, they can't remember. What else? Oh, it, well, they together didn't, but he did have some losers like The Great Gatsby. Oh, well, that's not Scorsese. No, I know. I know that. Coming away from those two, I can't oh, yeah. think of anything else they did. Oh, The Departed. Yeah, okay. Which is also, it's fine. Yeah, and he did some great stuff like Inception. Oh, I love Inception, yeah. yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, he is consistent, a consistently engaging, compelling actor. He seems to be tapped in, uh, really, to some raw emotional nerves. They're like right under the surface. He kind of reminds me Shutter Island. Thank yeah, you, Mark. Shutter Island is another great. disappointment. I mean, one disappointment after the next with those guys, <clears throat> Scorsese and DiCaprio. Enough yeah. already. I want them to stop it. Well, and don't you think that, that uh, Brad Pitt starts to get close to Leo's range when he does Tree of Life? You think? Interesting. Well, because he's the abusive father, yes, right? Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, something happens when Brad Pitt plays a bad guy. Bad, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Like in Troy. In, not that he's totally bad in Troy, but he's definitely uh, on the line there. There's yeah. Some villainous yeah, right, very qualities, good, yes. especially when he kills, um, what's the guy's name? The good guy in Troy. Oh, uh, Eric Bana. Bana. No? no, Eric Bana's character. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hector. Yeah. Okay. And he drags Hector's Hector, body yeah. through the streets pretty rough. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, but yes, yeah, something happens there when he plays a character that's not... Totally it, would good. this be similar to the character he played in Inglorious Bastards? Well, you get that ornery quality, yes. right? Yeah. And that's good, too. That's like, a, again, the character part. Like a, yeah. a rich character part. Yes, yes. Um, and he was also in War Machine. Yeah, uh, I didn't see that. Yeah. That was uh, on Netflix. And then he... then. 
typical of his. Now, I don't think Leo has had the private life that Brad Pitt has had. And so you get, then you find, get some real turkeys like By the Sea with Angelina Jolie. Mm. And you get a reflection in his choice of film yeah. to where his life and potentially his career is going. Now, I right. think his career takes a big turn up again, if it's possible, with the, uh, the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I'm hoping. Yeah, I, I'm hoping too. And I hope that, you know, what he starts to do is work with some directors that kind of that kind of get, you know, under his skin a little yes, bit. Yes, yes. Or get under the character's skin a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, everybody loves Fight Club. That's yes. like a sort of iconic it, it, performance. Yeah, it is. Um, but for me, it's a lot of surface stuff going on there. And especially because that character turns out to be not real. I think that... that that's further, yeah. further puts a s sort of shallow, you know, yeah. a sheen on that that character. Well, maybe I, I, our discussion can end on who is preeminent of these two by asking my audience here, mm -hmm. who has received an Oscar of these two? Well, DiCaprio has DiCaprio. clearly for, for the Revenant. Revenant. Okay. So and, and Brad has not. No. Okay. So, has Brad been nominated? Do we know that? That's probably arcane. You know what? I don't know if he was. He should have been nominated for Moneyball because that was and possibly a for superb button. Button. performance. Possibly and possibly for Benjamin right, Button. Right. Right. Um, right now, as it stands, head to head. Yes. Brad Pitt is the better movie star, and Leo is the better actor. And I think. And now maybe, in this new film where they collaborate, yes. something will rub off on and, each other. And for our audience. Uh, we'll return for her to this film after we see it and make our final <laughs> determination. <laughs> oh. He's running back.